Hey, what's going on everybody? It's Jamel Gibbs, your family-oriented entrepreneur. And what I do is I teach real estate investors how to create time and freedom through proven real estate investing strategies. So the other day I released a video, I talked about a condemned property, how to buy condemned houses. Um, a couple people wanted a little more information on how to do that. So I actually wanted to talk about that in this video I want to talk about that today and we're gonna go back over to that condemned house and uh, maybe walk around a little bit and talk about condemned properties and how you can actually uh, acquire them in your real estate business whenever I'm in a neighborhood I always drive the whole neighborhood to see if there's anything else in the neighborhood. So let's say, for example, I had a seller's appointment. I would drive the whole neighborhood 15 minutes before and after to see if I see anything um, that might make sense for me to look at. So we're on our way to this house up here. I think it's on the same street, but um, see the, the yellow sticker on the window? Whenever you see houses, and that was one of the points I was making in that video. Whenever you see houses with stickers on the windows or notices on the doors and things like that, definitely 100% of the time, take down the address and do your research. So basically when it comes to um, these types of properties, when you got condemned real estate, this one doesn't necessarily say it's condemned. Um, I am gonna show you that condemned house in a, in a few minutes, but this one has a notice of violation. Eventually, this will uh, end up being condemned over time. But this is simply for, uh, says property overgrown. So it could be that the tree, the, the grass, the grass is overgrown. So they got a, a violation notice on this. Then you got the plumbing repair guy, stickers on the windows. That's basically what you have right here, right? So. It says entire property front, back, sides must be mowed. So this is a code violation right here in the area. So I'm gonna take a picture of this, right? And I'm gonna contact the city to see if they heard of anything. In fact, there's a phone number right there. I'm gonna take a picture of that right there. I'm gonna call up to see if uh, anybody responded to this and how I can get in contact with the person. Another thing I'm gonna do is go to the tax assessor's website, see who actually owns this house. Once I figure out who owns it, I'm gonna reach out to them and let them know, look, I got a picture, and that's why I took the picture. I got a picture of a sticker on your door saying that the grass was overgrown. You know, um, if you're having trouble maintaining the property, you know, I'm actually looking for properties. I actually own properties in the area and I would like to consider buying your house for cash as well. So why don't we do that in the car? All right, so another thing you could do is talk to the neighbors, right? So you could, I, I'm gonna talk to this guy. I'm gonna drive up for a second and talk to this guy right here, but um, cause I just noticed he walked out to check his mailbox. He might know how long this place has been vacant or who owns the house. He might have their phone number, you never know. So whenever you're looking at a property, talk to the neighbors cause you could get some information from them as well. Hey, what's going on, man? How you feel, bro? Hey, you know how long that place been vacant? Three years? Yeah, you know, you don't know the owner, do you? They cousin house? How long ago was that? A couple of weeks ago. You don't, you don't know who they are, do you? Okay, so I'm gonna try to reach out to them because I want to buy that house, man. But you know, it, it's just it's causing an issue right now. But you don't know what's wrong with the owner, or if anything is wrong with him. He's just old. Yeah, he's living in California. Okay, so he live out in Cali. Yeah. Okay. Perfect, man. Well, I definitely appreciate that, bro. Oh yeah, no problem. Thanks, man. What's your name? Sean. Sean. Yeah. I'm Mel. All right. Pleasure, brother. All right. All right, man. Got a little bit of information from him. You just saw exactly how I did it right um he mentioned that 
happened and that was spontaneous too that was just off the cuff he didn't even know i was pulling up on him but basically he told me that the the old the, the person who who owns the house is old he lives out in california obviously the house that's all, all the way on the west coast right let me pull over for a second just sitting there gathering information from people just talking to the neighbor now i could look up who the real owner is find a way to get in contact with them let me explain exactly how to do that and then once we do that we can see if we can do something on this so we sit in front of the condemned house we just pulled up you can see uh, i'll show it to you in just a minute but what i want to do first is i actually want to contact the sellers on the other one so we can make some type of contact if we can uh through the tax assessors websites let me go to this website here another way to do this is to skip trace but i'm not going to skip trace them right now i'm just going to show you an easy free way to get it done go to netronline.com i have videos on youtube showing you exactly how to do this but i'm using netronline.com and once i get there i'm going to pull up public records online once i go to public records online i'm simply going to select north carolina and then once I do that, I'm going to select the, the county, go to the assessor's online data, the data online for the assessors. I'm going to type in for the location. I'm going to go ahead and type it in. I'm not going to give it away on camera, though. And let's see who owns this house. Sometimes you got to play around with the site a little bit to see if you could come up with the right information found out who the owner is so this is that property that we just stopped stopped by is not a condemned property yet it's not owned by the state It's not owned by the city or anything like that it is a condemned property and is owned by a guy um you know just verifying what the neighbor sean told me this guy lives in let me see he bought it for $65,000 back in 1999. It's saying it's worth 70000 now, but I know I know for a fact it's worth more than 70000 because I own a house right on the next street. Um, and this guy lives in... He has a he has an address here in my city. Um, but I heard, you know, according to the neighbor, he lives in, in California. So I'm not sure how true that is. But what I'm going to do now, I'm going to take his inf his name and I'm going to go to fastpeoplesearch.com real quick. This is just a free and easy way to get this done, right? Sometimes the information is not as accurate as I want it to be, but it's, it's doing a job right now. And just so y'all know, none of this was planned. None of it was scripted. The video was supposed to be about this condemned house, but we, uh, we adding this in there because this is real-time information. All right, so let's make this call. Fast busy. There's a there's a few numbers here, so I'm just gonna call down until I get somebody. We're sorry, you have reached a number that has been disconnected. Or but here's the deal, guys. This is why skip tracing is so important, cause you get accurate information when you go to sites like this. You know, you can save a lot of time just paying a little bit of money for the skip trace, but we're gonna keep keep it moving. Remember, real estate investing is all about data. Another fast busy. If you got the right data, and you got a way to get in contact with people, which I have the guy's name now, so I could skip trace it later on. I could get in contact with people fast. So notice the first thing I did. I saw the house. I saw it had a sticker on it. I went to the house. Um, got the information that I needed from the house, talked to the neighbor. After I talked to the neighbor, all I ultimately did was went to netronline.com. I found out who the owner was. I saw that the property wasn't condemned or anything like that. Once I found that information out, I went over to uh, fastpeoplesearch.com. I'm gonna always recommend a skip trace. And I'll provide a link in, in the description box for a skip trace for you. And uh, just trying to get in contact with the owner. Let them know that I'm interested in the property. Let's try this number. 
Welcome to Verizon Wireless. You're so basically, we can't get in contact with him right now, but I will get in contact with him once I skip trace the information later on. Uh, and then we'll take it from there. But real simple. That's more of a driving for dollars situation. Always drive the neighborhoods 15 minutes before you got an appointment and 15 minutes after. This particular property, I didn't have an appointment. I was just coming from my rental property, uh, just kind of verifying where we were on a rehab. And I was able to see that house and uh, show you guys that process on video. Uh, a couple of things that you want to keep in mind when it comes to condemned real estate. Number one is it doesn't necessarily have to be a physically distressed property. A lot of us, when we think about condemned real estate, we think that it's in terrible shape. That's not always the case, right? So sometimes a property be a property can become condemned if the grass is too tall or they got more coal violations than, than they can pay and they just let the property go. Sometimes it could be a tax situation. Let's say that they're not paying their property taxes and uh, the state or the city, the municipality has to take the property back, it can become a condemned property at that point. Most of the time it is gonna be uh, physically distressed, but just be mindful, sometimes it can be financially distressed as well. So let's look at this property real quick. If you just notice, the property, it needs work, but it's not in terrible, terrible shape. So in my opinion, there's really no reason for this property to be um, uh, condemned in a lot of people's minds, again, thinking about the boarded up houses and stuff like that. This property is actually pretty well kept besides like the roof needing some needing some work. Somebody lived here and, and really took care of this property, right? So um, it's not in terrible shape. It's a brick house. Just looking at it, it's not run down to the point where it's not salvageable, right? This property can be fixed up. It can be rented. It can be kept. The problem is it's condemned because somebody didn't pay something so this is basically telling me that maybe they didn't pay their taxes on it maybe it was a financial issue rather than a physically distressed property issue and that's something that we got to find out so i'm going to go to take a picture of that number right there on that window once i take a picture of that number I'm gonna go ahead and call up the city and find out what's going on with this property. Let's do it. So this property has been condemned since June. And the same person from that other house that we uh, just came from, where I just contacted the seller, that same person is the person that condemned this property. So I wanna contact that person um, in order to see if I could do something with this. But another key tip for you when it comes to condemned real estate, be mindful that the person that you get in contact with that, that condemned the house, maybe it's a code officer or something like that, build a relationship with that person. Because if that person is on this house and that house down there and maybe some other houses, maybe he could provide you with a list of condemned houses in the area. And if you could get that list from him, you don't have to drive around looking at these houses all day long. You can literally contact that person and let them know that you buy real estate. If they could send you the condemned list, you could work something out with them or you would appreciate uh, them being a part of your team. All right. So just be mindful of that. Right. Build relationships. Real estate investing is a uh, is a relationship. Real estate, period. Not just investing, but real estate is a relationship business. Sorry, I missed your call, but please leave your name and your number and I'll give you a call back as soon as I'm able to. Thank you. Have a great day. Hi, my name is uh, Jamel Gibbs. I was calling because I noticed that there was a sign on a property on the street and I wanted to get some information on that. I'm interested in potentially purchasing that property and uh, I noticed that you had signs on another property as well in regards to code violations and things like that. If you don't mind giving me a call back, I would love to talk to you about potentially purchasing these properties or seeing what the, what the uh, circumstances are with these properties so that we could uh, uh, talk about them further. All right. So um, when you get a chance, please give me a call. And uh, if not, I'll, I'll follow up with you as well. I appreciate your time. Thanks. So I wasn't able to get in contact with anybody. These condemned properties are everywhere, right? In every neighborhood, every city, everywhere in America, everywhere in probably Canada as well. If you're looking hard enough, if you build enough relationships, if you're in the field, this is just another way to find great deals. Try to find properties that give evidence 
that has some type of distress, you make a lot of money in real estate. Hope this video helps somebody out today. Listen, go ahead and like this video, subscribe to this channel, click the notification bell, and continue to support this channel. Let other people know uh, about this channel by sharing it. It's growing nicely, and I appreciate all your support. And I'll talk to y'all in the next one. Peace.